we were just sick of it. Like, let's try to do something about this. And that's where we said, could we turn our investigative reporting skills on the system itself and show why this country has such an unhealthy relationship with transparency and um, giving people access to the, the information that they own? So you know as well as I do that, that some people are going to be listening to this interview. They're going to be listening to the podcast while they're walking their dog, and they're they're going to go, ah, this isn't me, right? <laughs> they're going to yeah, they're going to go. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm never going to file a freedom of information request. I really honestly don't think that this matters to me. Can we convince them otherwise? I hope so because guys. People, this is the foundation of democracy stuff. And don't, you know, fall asleep just yet because the vast majority of people who file FOIs are regular citizens and businesses. They're, um, you know, media, academics. We make up a very small portion of requesters, even though we might be the most visible ones. Um, You know, people are filing FOIs for things like they want to understand what their school board is doing uh, with class sizes. A lot of requests uh, during COVID around um, people trying to understand health data and mask research. Um, this is businesses trying to understand why they didn't win a contract or developers looking for information about property before purchasing it. This is people trying to access their police report, their health information. Um, they're holding, people are really interested in, in what government does. They want to know what um, types of conversations their uh, politicians are having with businesses and developers and environmental groups. I mean, this is what FOI exists for. And in Canada, we are among the worst in the developed world. Uh, our governments are are very, very bad on this front. I can ask you why that is or why you think that is in just a second. Mm-hmm. But, but I think that you just accomplished one of your assignments uh, by laying out examples of what people might request information on i bet you just woke up a lot of people i bet some people had no idea that they could look into those you know the one that woke me up is a business wondering why they didn't win a contract that would be something that a lot of people would be very interested in was there nepotism is there shadiness i mean of course people would be curious to know Exactly. You know, one of the stories that we told in the launch of, of this project uh, was a, a, a small town developer. So this is not, you know, one of these the big guys. This is a guy who is a developer in a, in a little city of about 45,000 people in eastern Ontario. And he was going around buying up buildings that had fallen into disrepair in the downtown core and fixing them up. Second floor becomes a residential apartment. Ground floor becomes commercial. And this was tickety-booing along for years. And then uh, there was a dispute with the city at one point, which was trying to expropriate part of his property on a, connected to a widening road issue. Just very small town stuff between businesses and city hall. And um, he says, after he pushed back on this expropriation, suddenly his business permits start getting denied. Business uh, building or his building permits, uh, building permits that were very similar to ones he'd been filing for years and years without issue. And this was going on and on. And it completely stopped his business from being able to function properly. And his commercial tenants were not getting, being able to move in. And he uh, he files a freedom of information request to see, like, why are they being denied? And the, the, the city quoted him. They wanted almost $2,000 in fees to access this information, which he paid he got back some blacked out paper, um, a box of his own emails and re- files that he had he had sent to the city, and then a note that the city was withholding 3,500 pages, just outright. You, we, we have 3,500 pages, you've paid $2,000, and we're not going to give it to you. This is what we're dealing with in Canada, which other countries do not deal with. When we were doing this reporting, we were testing you know, just how bad things are. And uh, my colleague Tom and I were filing FOIs with cities for things like contracts. We asked for cities, can we have your garbage collection contract? Just basic stuff. And they said no. Like, think about that. This is a city that is paying millions of dollars to a company. And I can't know the exact amount of money. We're not asking for the details of the contract, just the amount that the contract is worth. That's secret information. Well, Taxpayers and just to, have a right to know how their governments are spending their money. Yeah, just to throw it out there as well, Robin, you're talking about a specific industry that's pretty well known for having uh, organized crime infiltrated in a number of cities. Uh, I'm going to throw out including Montreal there. So to suggest that a city could get away with trying to justify not providing information in that context is, is ludicrous, quite frankly. And 
it's not, they're not allowed to do it. The courts have said contracts are public. Appeals commissions, which deal with FOI requests when people complain, have said they're public. They are undisputedly public in this country. You, if you are a Canadian, you are able to ask your public institutions where they're spending their money. That is a right of yours. But in Canada, these, these governments, these public institutions are just saying no. Dare us. What are you going to do about it? Okay, so why, this do, is why breaking you, the law. Why do you think this is the case? Like when you say that Canada, I mean, we, we, we loved it. We had Frances Hagen yesterday talking about, you know, misinformation and social media and all this. And, and, and she says that from a legislative standpoint, she says Canada is, is recognized as a good actor. She says Canada is recognized internationally as a, as a country that, that doesn't over legislate, a country that likes to legislate oh. from an educate. I mean, Canada, we, we love to think that we have the best reputation. We sew our flags on our backpacks and now we find out that i mean when it comes to the developed world when it comes to so-called first world countries when uh, we're talking about access to information we're brutal at it yeah our legislation is ranked 51st in the world not great we are bad and uh you know things like uh, i'm coming back to contracts because it's just the most easy in the united states states cities the federal government they just post contracts online in canada you can't even get it so when we were doing this, inform- this this reporting, what was really interesting, we did an audit of every um, ministry and department in the country. There's about 250, every province, territory, federal government. I should say, it's not just ministries and territories that are subject to FOI. Basically, any institution that's paid for with tax dollars or that's run by government is, is subject to FOI, with some exceptions. But we did an audit of ministries and departments. The entire country, they're blowing their deadlines. They're overusing redactions. The, you know, records are not being released regularly. What was really interesting, though, is the entire province of Alberta denied the FOIs. The entire province of Alberta, every, all 22 ministries. And again, I want to say this is not a media request. This is not someone going, uh, you know, screw the Globe and Mail. I don't want to answer this. They are legally required to respond to an FOI that asked for really basic information. We wanted some basic data from their internal tracking system. And they responded and said, we, uh, we don't have any records, which is just straight up a lie. Hmm. Like, that's not true. They do have records. And we've been back and forth with them. And there's some kind of like twisting in the wind around uh, the, the form of a record. The bottom line is, you know, this is really disturbing. And I do, I do think it was interesting that Alberta, of all places, where I think, you know, is more aligned in some ways culturally with American sentiments around, you know, what, what does freedom mean? Sure. And freedom means freedom of expression, that this was blocked by Alberta. And, um, and that's just an example of that governments are, you know, going out of their way to just Say no. Trust yeah, us. I mean, can you and I agree that the word freedom has been so bastardized and misrepresented over the past number of years that I don't even know what it represents anymore? I'm Which- so proud of this investigation. And guys, if you feel like nerding out, go on, go on secretcanada.com, throw in some search terms, snapping turtles, environmental assessment reports, Justin Bieber, they're all in there. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, what? Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber's got the a Biebs? hit. Yeah. What? No, someone, no, Johnny's paying attention. Was, what? What's going on with the Bieber? Someone was releasing records on Justin Bieber having a dispute at the border or something like that. You can go look. You can ah, read it. Ah, right. Yeah. There's lots of fun on this uh, on this site to play around with. So wow. I'm, I'm just reading. It was Justin Bieber allegedly bribed border guards with ten thousand dollars worth of backstage passes to get his friends with criminal records into Canada when what? he had a show. Yeah. So. It's a, it's a, wow. I'm already intrigued about this site, Robin. This looks amazing.